I've been actually riding a lot the last nine years. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. Damn. Like the whole the whole winters from pretty much from Christmas until end of May. We've seen mm-hmm. Ollie's in Pingu Land. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. That was amazing. Uh, yeah. And you've been riding with Abe a bunch more this year. Should we expect another movie? Yeah, we we have actually a new project, and it kind of since I've been riding with Abe, I've been like filming a lot more. You know, before then I was riding a lot, but I never was filming. I was just you know riding with my friends. So that's why the last kind of like two years, two, three seasons, I've been like doing some some filming. And we have a new project, and this is uh, like a multi-year project, and it's not only filmed up in Pinguland in Riksgrans, and it's we're gonna have trips a little bit everywhere. We we wanna be Japan, Europe, North America before we finish the project. It's a really fun time to be a pro snowboarder from the '90s and 2000s, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. No pressure. W- what boards are you riding? It looks like you're riding. Sometimes you're writing your older boards, yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 I have one graphic that's kind of like a, like the old graphic, but I'm riding Alliance snowboard since since we started, like what can it be like 24 years ago, 99. And are they are you still making Alliance snowboards? It's, yeah, still been making and and especially in Japan, we we still sell quite a lot of boards and I ride them all the time when I do like park riding and freestyle, but we never really built any free riding board until this year we have you know something this year but so that's why the last nine years i've also been riding a yentam stick oh right right so whenever i'm riding powder and free riding i have a couple of different yentam sticks that i've been i've been riding so i i switch between alliance and yentam stick so i'm i'm just out of <laughs> i'm out of the loop here <laughs> it happens <laughs> uh you've been continuing with a line the whole way through and yeah. it's just not the you know trans world full page ad hype a lion that it was in 24 years ago it's now you're like a personal project you and a few other people like a distributor in japan etc yeah it's, it's actually the my partner in japan he he kept it alive and in the beginning we know you know we tried to make you know uh like a real brand out of it and we were in america and europe and everywhere and uh then in the end it was only japan that was like surviving and selling boards and doing doing it good so thanks to japan we survived and uh, that's like our main market that's so, awesome but you know since we we were not that big of a company the hit whatever we we took together with all the other companies wasn't fixable because it was just we had to restructure and you know focus on the few countries, example Japan, where we could sell boards. That's amazing. And it's been good, like that. I'm glad that you're still doing it. I'm sorry that I didn't know, but I mean I haven't been to Japan yet, so. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, actually because that's why it's I'm I'm in Japan almost every year, and still today I see alliance boards everywhere on the hills. And <laughs> that's cool. You know, never see them kind of like in Europe that much. You know, you see some in Sweden because we sold a lot of Alliance boards back in the days, you know, old Alliance boards. But in Japan, Japan, you actually see like a lot of people riding Alliance boards and I'm super stoked. That's that. rad. Yeah, that's how I met Abe because he was riding an Alliance board and yeah. I was like, wow, that fucking board is stiff as mm-hmm. shit. And he was blasting. Yeah. He's really good. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. cool to meet him in at Mount Hood. He's got such a good energy. And he's still riding, like a board from probably two thousand one, maybe. I think yeah, twenty twenty two year old board. And he's blasting. It's awesome. So some lucky some lucky winner is going to get to get these, and they're they're signed by you guys in person. Yeah. What was the day like that you signed those? First, it was kind of like a cool project to be a part of, and the whole thing, and. Then when it came to like the, actually the prints, they were done. Uh, yeah, I was you know supposed somehow to meet up with him and sign them. Or he kind of lives in the north in Tromsø, and but then it came up that he was coming over to Oslo to see Terje and have Terje sign his prints. Yeah. And at the same time, same time it was like a No Effects concert, 
and he was like, yeah, maybe I can show up the same uh, weekend. And I figured out, yeah, I, I take the bus over there, you know, a couple of hours from Gothenburg where I lived. Mm-hmm. And I stayed at the Terry's place from like Friday to Sunday. And we actually signed those uh, those prints and we had, you know, great time, a good reunion. Because, you know, 30 years ago, actually, I, I watched the No Effects concert in Oslo. No. And this is before nobody knew who No Effects was maybe I heard them like in the first skateboard movie, like the kind of some something like Roadkill. Yeah, they were in Roadkill, like yeah, yeah, early stuff. But that was kind of like the first, you know, nineteen ninety three when I, I kind of knew about them a little Shit. bit. And then uh, it was me, Terry, and uh, Russell Winfield. We were in stream snowboarding, and I was in stream the whole summer riding, and I. I I just got to know Terry, and he he offered me to come with him and Russell to Oslo. So I just jumped in the car, and we drove that six, seven hours drive to Oslo, and we got to see No Effects uh, play in front of like less than one hundred people. Wow! And, was, wow. and, and then and then our like twenty nine years later, last year they were, were back in Oslo playing. So that was like a good timing for me to meet up with Terry and have this the watch No Effects again. That's amazing. And, and it, yeah, it was a good time, and I got to meet a lot of like old and new snowboard friends from Norway, and yeah, I got to see Oslo in the kind of like in the summer. That's rad. Yeah. So you and Terry, do you, you and Terry, do you stay in contact, or is this just you know, hey, this project just makes sense. We're gonna we'll bump back into each other. Yeah. No, we we are only like in contact through with also many others through social media or, you know, something mm. that never, mm-hmm. ever, you know, as a person, like we actually were hanging out a lot more when I used to live in San Diego in the nineties, yeah. like 95 through 98. Yeah. He was out in California as well. And then we were actually, you know, bumping into each other, hanging out uh, at different places and going surfing or doing All stuff. Right. But since he, or since I moved back to Sweden, we only meet whenever it's an event or something. And it happened, you know, many, many times through Arctic Challenge or to, up to Rick's grandson. Yeah. But other than that, you only meet up every once in a while. Yeah, it, I have to ask, would you, is there any chance you would have put uh, Terry on on a lion? Oh, it's not really a team, kind of. It's right. a Japanese team. We sell some boards in Japan. And, yeah. And, and it's, we always had, you know, like that market as it's it's a functional market yeah and other than that you know there is not really a budget to do yeah anything. and you know we did that and tried that and we had you know some years but it's not it doesn't make sense to actually if you don't sell enough boards to tr- even try you know because it's, it's a different market it's yeah it's hard that's that's where we are right now with and uh, you know like you could be the, the best snowboarder in the world right now and you might not have a board sponsor you might be sponsored by you know ford motor car or something yeah. There are actually a few countries. Example, one, one the country is Norway, and Norway they they are selling a lion board, and they've been doing that you know since the beginning. And this guy is doing a good job, and like it's just thanks to him and what he's doing in Norway, he can actually sell a decent amount of boards every year. And it, it's it's all about having that person in that country doing that. It's it's nothing we can do, even if we do all this ad advertisement. <laughs> you have the person committed in that country to function as a distributor if it's going to work like these days at, at least in europe it's so many different small countries yeah it's nuts now you know i guess america whatever all over there too you need you need to have the right uh, people what we're watching in america is that these companies are getting bit bought by bigger companies that are getting bought by bigger companies that are yeah. eventually being sold to jamie salter i think that's what ends up happening at the end of, yeah. <laughs> of all of this stuff it's like you know, Nineeckers buying up uh, a bunch of great companies, and then probably at some point, Jamie Salter will buy Nineecker. And I'm not saying that in a positive way. I'm saying that's the weird thing that is happening with mm. capitalism is that you have to be so big mm. that you can afford to run these. I don't know it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. In in the day when a lion was in the magazines and you had the killer team and a distributor in Canada, distributor in the States, um, the game was completely different. 
and everybody yeah. was racing after a, a core audience that was buying pro model boards. Mm. It's different now. Yeah. Yeah, people go to the mall to buy their boards up maybe. I, or no, they don't. They buy them online. Yeah, I think it's it's not really a, a big space for the medium sized companies. Either you become one of these bigger companies who goes the same way as everyone else, so you can maybe stay a little bit core and survive at the different locations, but it's not going to be like a machine. It's going to be more like something that's maybe like a lion, still like 24 years, still survives, but it's not, we don't make, you know, and really any money and stuff. It's just, you know. Right, right. Rad Air was the same. I rode for Rad Air in the beginning. Harry Guns, Paul Gruber, absolute legends of, uh, of Austria. And uh, yeah, like he, Harry's still doing it, mm, but yeah. it, it's not a big company. It's not Crazy Banana. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it's like tankers and longboards and, and two passionate, really amazing people. Now Harry's son is involved, I believe, so. School, mm. yeah. We're here. We are thirty years later. You know, thirty years ago, when you're going to that No Effects concert, and yeah. snowboarding is this the hottest thing. It hasn't ride hasn't even become public yet. What a fucking trip! Hey, what a ride! What an awesome yeah. thing! Mm -hmm. And still to do it now, there's a bit, and I see it in your riding. There's still a hint of that creativity, that fun, that like, oh. you know, like. You know, we're going to do only ollies. We're not going to grab. Like, it's like you get to say what you do because it's an expression of this fun that you're having out on the snow. It's rad. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's something that could be forever and endless as, as long as you tap into that, that, uh, you know, mind or vibe that you actually, a lot of actually riders had this in the 90s because it was new and fresh and. Nobody knew where snowboarding was taken, and it's, it's still possible to find that today. And in, in it's that's going to be look different, but it's going to be the same feeling. Yeah, when you actually can kind of have that uh, expression, and I think, yeah, I think that's what's also good with snowboarding that it's it's still possible. It's, it's still, you know, it's still up to each each rider, and it doesn't feel that way when you're trying to figure out business right no the business no, no. is done yeah, yeah. business all the yeah. different but on the board riding it it's can still be the same that's where we're the lucky ones because i'm sure like you you knew a lot of like me you knew a lot of people that were on the business side of things and mm. it doesn't look as fun for them anymore hell yeah it was fun when they could sell 200 boards to a shop in some small town and they're making all this mm. money that was fun but we mm. were really having the fun because we were actually out there snowboarding and now yeah. they're grinding trying to figure it out and we're still snowboarding which is still just as fun as it was maybe even more now because you mm. yeah you've got to figure some other way of not riding the lifts with ten thousand other people and you know finding your spot finding your zones finding your friends and doing your thing i, I love that you're doing it it's huge it's a huge huge inspiration to uh, to see you still shredding with the same style and that same enthusiasm, uh, and you're leading the way for a lot of people that um, you know. Uh, there's the opposite of you. There are people who just quit because it's not as good as it used to be, and it's not. You're not going in a helicopter to Alaska. You're not flown around the world and and staying you know all over the place when the snow is good. But it's still the snowboarding part of it is just fucking awesome. So it's cool. I hope a lot more pros come out and, and follow your lead and show us what it's like to have fun snowboarding. Yeah, but I think with many things in, in life, you really need a break sometimes. If you do mm. done something as much as I did, you know, skateboarding and snowboarding, I kind of had like a, what, eight, nine, ten years. I was still skating and snowboarding, but I wasn't really like... 100% in, in it. I was doing other things in life and I needed to have that type of break yeah. to tap back into snowboarding and really feeling like, you know, stoked again. Yeah. It's, I think, I think also that's true with other riders and people like you can't just be too much in love with one thing with the whole life. It's better to like go, let it go for a while. And then if you can catch it again, then it's more a true love. <laughs> I'm going to end it right there. You're the best. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks for signing all those prints. 
and yeah. uh, and sharing your story about that. Uh, I'm going to have you on the show again. I'm coming to Sweden. I'm going to come to Sweden to yeah. ride and to get some more interviews with Swedish riders that are just, uh, you know, legends like yourself. Yeah, definitely come to Sweden. We have a lot of time here, so we for sure can hang out. Excellent. Thanks, Ingmar. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing your, your, your show and everything. It's great. Uh, thanks, dude. I've, that means the world to me. That's awesome.